Hello, everyone, and welcome to Grip Lock on Asian Disc Golf Weekly Podcast. I'm Hunter, joined as always by Trevor and Connor. And today's episode is presented by True Classic Tees. Head over to True Classic Tees and get 25% off with the code Grip Locked. Uh, we're going to talk through Green Mountain Championships today, talk through a little points, talk through a little power ranking update, do a little Trevor's trivia, and then I don't have anything planned after that, but we'll talk about something, and you're not going to want to miss it, but first... We can bull. A word from our sponsor. Today's episode is brought to you by Discbox. So many disc offers have many, many extra discs cluttering our closets and cars. Very few storage products on the market are designed specifically for disc golf and don't waste any space, and unfortunately, the ones that do exist are terribly expensive, but now there's finally an affordable option called Discbox. Discbox is the only low-cost disc golf storage product on the market. You can go to discboxdg.com and you'll find quantity discounts, wholesale options, multiple colors, and most importantly, no order minimum. So you can order just a single box if you want, but you're going to want to order a bunch if you want to get the true quality, nope, quantity discount there. Visit discboxdg.com today and get your collection organized, and you can use code GRIPLOCKED for 10% off of your order. Thanks again, Discbox, for sponsoring today's episode. Green Mountain Championship, the first ever Pro Tour playoff event, went down this past weekend. Playoffs. And it was pretty electric overall. Um, on MPO, we had Ricky Wysocki taking it down. Sounds and very eventful. Then there was a three-way tie for second between Matty O, Isaac Robinson, and Chris Dickerson. And then on FPO, we had Chris and Tatar taking it down. Hannah Blomroos coming second. Owen Scoggins coming third. Um, I mean, the first thing we got to talk about here is Chris and Tatar is unbelievable. Yeah. It seems like Kristen is probably going to win out at this point. And it doesn't really seem like it's going to be close. It doesn't really seem like it. Like that seems like the most likely scenario. Like it, it's it, it's feeling like it feels like how it used to feel for with Paige, but even almost even more extreme because like Paige had cat like right now. Kristen is just not being challenged. And like Henna had a good event, but like that was not typical for her. Like, man, if some well, of her. So her only finish, it, it's very Macbeth. 2015 her season's insane her only finish outside the top three was a dnf due to injury in july yeah other than that she's went she's been third first second third second second first 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 not all of those are pro tours by any means she some of those are like european pro tour events she's dominant and yeah i i i think if she does somehow i mean it just seems unfathomable to think that she could like the fact, too, that she choked away Champions Cup like she did. Yeah. That makes us even crazier. Like, how? Like she should have another major. Because she didn't play U.S. Women's. Mm-mm. She lost Champions Cup, came in second. She won Worlds. She lost the European Open. Didn't she play in that? Or no, she was injured. No, she was injured. She missed She missed two of the majors. Yeah. She's going to play the it's our major. Uh, major in our hearts. The major in our hearts. Throw pink women's. Throw pink. I'm, um, I, I mean, she'll she, be my U.S. champion. She look. It looks. It's funny too, because like for for throw pink, like I mean, she. There's no way anybody's beating her there because you like, wouldn't think her game is just like she just throws well, smart shots, keeps the disc in yeah. bounds, and makes putts. Like, and historically, historically, Paige does not do good in open fields with OB. Which makes no sense because, like, Paige's game, she should well, be able I mean, to do so good. One last year, I, it's. I mean, Kristen is a runaway train right now in the FPO division, and man, it's it's just insane. Like how quickly she's. You got to remember too that like Kristen's dominance has happened very quickly. Like she had, yeah. It just just like these last few seasons. So like she probably hasn't even hit her ceiling yet. Which it, is crazy. The, the 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 biggest bummer is that she's already thirty, you know. So like, I think the FPO can breathe a sigh of relief for that. Although, I think I just said a sigh of relief. A sigh sigh of, of relief. I'll, I'll take a, a sigh of relief. Yeah, I'll have a sigh of relief. <laughs> it can be the sigh of relief because like at least you know they've got age on their side. But man, like she she just looks so dominant right now. I don't I don't see. I it, mean, it, if it you just look at that leaderboard, I mean she's beating like the best players in the world by like 20 plus strokes. Oh yeah. So Paige Pierce, like <laughs> at this point I'm willing to say Paige Pierce and Katrina Allen, uh, it's not even a storyline when, when they are gone, when they play bad They're washed. Uh, at this point in the season. That is that an overreaction? Probably. Mm-hmm. That's fine. It feels That's what it I'm just, here for. It, right now. It feels a lot like whenever it seemed like Paige was, have the you, only one player. have Doesn't you looked at so right Connor? Have you looked Paul at the score? Christian have you looked at the scorecard there? I, ha- I I just looked at don't look the at order. it don't look at it don't look at it don't look at it okay. have you looked at like the scores no okay, I, want you I to just play a saw the order game. of I want you to play a guessing game how okay. much did Kristen beat Paige Pierce by 
Well, I'm going to guess you wouldn't be asking me this if it wasn't a considerable amount. I know she won by seven. Okay. I'm going to say she 20 strokes. 31. Oh, <laughs> I would ask you about her over Katrina Allen, but Katrina Allen didn't make the cut, so she didn't play that the final round. Is, that is shocking. That, yeah. that doesn't even seem Katrina Allen missed possible. the cut at this event. That is crazy. Yeah, and Paige Pierce Paige, was very close to missing the cut. That's almost eight well, strokes the thing, around. That's the thing is, is that it'd be more like, around. it's almost... It's almost not surprising from Paige because it feels like it's been like this the, for a little bit. You it's know, just, like she's been. Uh, it, I don't know. I don't know what's so, going on. It's just so curious because, like, I don't know it's what's one on thing. Like in the MPO, like uh, with Paul, for example, you can you can mostly point to just the field getting better rather than a decline in Paul's game. And yeah, clearly, for sure. clearly, he's still able to win at the. Yeah. Anyways, you could you could point that way for a, for a lot of players that have maybe underperformed in the MPO division. Say, well, look at the field. But Paige, yeah, the field has gotten stronger, but not uh, not dramatically. Well, and she just is playing awful. Like it's yeah. just like well, her scores are ridiculous. I what can are those hear, rate? Wait, we don't do ratings in the show, but I I will I, look them up. Here yeah, we second. have to know. <laughs> I can already hear the comments. And yes, I in this chair understand that Paige Pierce has won two majors this year, and. Two Pro Tour events, not Silver Series, Pro Tour events. I understand she has a four-win se- season, but but when you're Paige Pierce and there's someone in the field that has not finished outside the top three, and you have things such as 21st at a major U.S. Women's on your rep- on your resume, you have a 10th place finish at Idlewild on your resume, you have a fifth place finish at World Championship, a fifth place finish at Des Moines, and now an 18th place finish at GMC, GMC the first playoff event. You're having a bad season as Paige Pierce. I tell you what, she's having a roller coaster of a season, man. Yeah, well, she's got she's got getting progressively worse as the season yeah, goes on. Like her average finish is heading downhill it is. as Kristen rises to the top. As Kristen rises from the ashes, Paige falls into them slightly. Yes. Katrina Allen, I haven't even looked at Kat's season this year. I feel like it's been bad, man. Man. Let's I try, I'm trying. I'm trying to look through Paige's Instagram to see if I have if there's anything saying like, you know, she's been struggling with something or like there's some other distractions in her life. No, she doesn't do that anymore. She's all positive. It's hurting her. <laughs> she needs that to is start. true. Is that something she came out and said like that, that could she's be, true. be all positive? She, she has been very, uh, very positive this season. She's kind of which there positive. There is some along. good things to positive thinking, but killers aren't always positive. Amen. Put that on a t-shirt. Killers aren't always positive. Uh, Katrina Allen. Killers are rarely positive. Yeah. <laughs> Katrina Allen has two wins. She has, I'm, I don't count Silver Series. She Katrina Allen does has not count that. Las Vegas and Ida Wild. She has two wins. Mm-hmm. But then she has an 11th place at Worlds, an 11th place at Des Moines. Sep- this is this is the stretch she's been on since her win at Ida Wild. She went fourth at a major, sixth at Glow, seventh at Ledgestone, 11th at Des Moines, 11th at Worlds, and now missing the cut in 24th at GMC puzzling it's puzzling i don't i don't yeah. know what's going on i just don't like i don't understand how like it would be one thing if they're just like taking a bunch of fourth fifth sixth places like i no but they're but, like they're getting crushed some of these events. it's like when Kristen plays bad she finishes in third yeah when cat plays bad this weekend she misses the cut and like That's 30 nice. strip like she i wish how far did cat so she shot she shot par the final round. Okay. So through three rounds, Kristen beat Cat by 30 strokes. Because Kristen shot no, Kristen shot four under. Okay. Okay. She still beat her by twenty six strokes through three rounds. That's nuts. So that's nine strokes around almost. So she was beating Paige by about eight around and beating Cat by about nine around. And and it doesn't make sense. It's like we and this is like we've seen it happening on like multiple different styles of course too. There's just like nothing to peg it to. Like you can't just say like Oh, this is where they're struggling. It's just like a bunch of events now. It's just like it's just like they get to a bad start. Like round one, Henna shot the hot at fifty eight. Kristen shot the second hot at fifty nine, and then Paige shot a sixty eight, and Cat shot a sixty seven. It's out of it. And it's just like they're immediately mentally checked out. They're done. They're out of it. Because like Paige's best round this weekend was a sixty six. And Kristen's best round this weekend was a fifty-seven. Tough man, listen, you, they're not they're not old enough to be fading like that. When you're like, especially when you're Paige, like if you want to keep that that goat status, you're not 
She you has know, to get the good. So I will say. So I mean, I would guys read? You would ask me like at the beginning of the season. I would say here's yeah, what Paige I think. Goat, I think that man, I would put Paige Pierce close to like the MJ of FPO currently, and I'd put Kristen as the LeBron James. Where yeah, Kristen's like probably the most talented disc golfer to ever play in FPO, but she's not the greatest of all time yet. You know, the funny thing is when I watch Paige play, if you showed me Paige and Kristen both playing and they're good shots, I would say yeah. that Paige is a more athletic she and gifted lo- yeah. disc golfer. Her throw is very she's athletic. She's not gifted. I don't hard, th- week, hard work beats talent when talent doesn't well, work hard. You just hard. said talented. <laughs> well, I think Kristen Tatar is the best player to ever I, be in FPO. It's, uh, yeah. Her putt is the biggest thing. It's hard. It's, Her putt is filthy. Paige she has a great so, forehand. Paige's putt was so automatic back Kristen in the day. Kristen throws forehands all over the Paige. forehand. I mean, yeah, the forehand is huge. I, I just like when I see Paige, like she still looks more athletic and more talented. And when I I've disagree. Se- I think Kristen looks a lot more athletic throwing the disc, yeah, just playing. I don't. I well, I mean, this is completely I think Paige, subjective. Paige but I might think. look a little more explosive, but her I movements don't that, look as athletic. Yeah, that's especially. Like it. I think one I thing think that does it for do. me is the. Well, that, that that's just a hitch in her putt. It's nothing. not a hitch; it's a routine that you well, choose yeah. to. It's nothing to do with anything. It's not going in. It used to though. That's what I'm saying. Like Paige used to be dominant. It's hard. It's hard used for to, me. Used to, used to, used to, used to, used to, used to. You know. <laughs> we were talking about we we're talking about in the grand scheme of history, not this season. So I'm allowed to say used to. Welcome I was to Kristen's gonna, age. I was the problem say. with Kristen is she's already 30. But what's the, what's the peak in disc golf? What do you she mean? She might have just entered her prime. True. Well. Yeah, I mean, no, I don't. I don't doubt that she's like she's not. She's certainly not old. Like, but like I'm just saying, like her career longevity is going to be a lot shorter than if she was doing this as a. Paul just 20. won worlds and he turned 45 this year. Yep. <laughs> Tom Brady's still playing football and he's 45. Kate Actual Climo won worlds at 62. We don't. Yeah, no, and here <laughs> the thing is, we don't know. We don't know like disc golf longevity super well. No, that's what I'm saying. It's like, more so. It's more so. The, the FPO field, so the, the disc golf field, um, especially post COVID boom within disc golf, is going to like every single year is going to get so much more saturated than the year before. Yes. So the problem is not how long can Kristen play well. It's like, is she already at her ceiling or is she close? And then 10 years from now, she might be able to play as just as effectively as she can right now. However, the field is going to. It's like there's gonna. I it's mean, almost there's like room, um, there's room in FPO for a player to come in and just and just destroy because if someone comes in with like, like with like Haley King power but Kristen accuracy, then like it's. I mean, the, f- the I think Kristen the field strength Haley. is Does going she? to just I f- maybe maybe that's just I think it's like compound interest. In the way the field strength is just going to go up, like it. <laughs> I think each year it's going to just be get so much more difficult. I would say MPO field strength wise is about four to five years ahead of FPO. Oh, at least. But I would I would say ten because I would say ten years from now, like ten years from now, when all of the people that are getting the young people right now that are getting into this game, like the it's just gonna look. And now that there's money, there's we're seeing college scholarships be handed out. Like everything that's happening is so unprecedented right now. As far as signings, like, yes, yeah, signings. <laughs> that like they're the field is just going to get so strong. Like it is going to be insane. So like, that's, that's when I talk about longevity is like, if Kristen could have been at her level, yes, you know, 10 years ago, no one would have touched her. Yeah. Like, you know, there's, there's a whole different story. She might already have four world titles, but it, it, it just is what it is. But what? yeah, she, I think, I think Kristen has every opportunity to win like the next four world titles. She, she could absolutely go on a streak like that. Let so. me throw this out here real quick. Let me catch uh, Did you got you probably already saw it. Did you see her world's recap post page? No. No. She did like a no, I probably did. I just scrolled past it. She did like a <laughs> here's a long overdue world's recap. It's pretty solid written post. I mean, it's it's not like there's not a single excuse in there. It really is I like respect that. Yeah, I mean it it's actually a super respectable post um about how like I'm I'm proud of myself for getting out there early, practicing as hard as I could. I'm sad that I couldn't pull together um, like a solid round or make an out or make a single outside 45 foot putt, like things like that. But it, I mean, it's a really well written post. I mean, she sounds solid. I just wish that she would play well. That's yeah, what no, she, does I, too. she keeps a good. She's keeping keeping a good attitude. Like that was that was a good post. Because and, you know, Paige is a great. She's a good ambassador yes. and player for this. Sport. Yeah. Here's the thing. The thing about Paige too is because she keeps her head on straight or at least is appearing to like keeping her spirits up 
she can dig herself out of that hole. But the problem is like, it's just tough when like she has that yeah. very like upbeat persona that would like lead you to believe that the mental game wouldn't be her struggle. But then like clearly we've seen this happen with Paige multiple times in her career where she slumps like this. So like, and it's got to It's, it's gotta be mostly her mental game because like you don't, you don't lose 30 strokes off yeah. your game just because, ah, you're just not playing too well. Because well, like, that's the thing is that it's easy for other, so, some other players to like be able to tell like, Okay, obviously, if they if they would have been ratings. good at like if they were a good putter, they'd be up there like Evelina, yeah. like stuff like that. Paige is missing everything, but Paige like yeah. hey, she's just not hitting fairways. Is that is that her it main just, collapse right now? She can't. She, well, she's not really putting really well either. But I mean, yeah, she just just throws a lot of errant shots. Yeah, but I'm gonna average this rating real quick. Oh gosh, I do have respect. I do have respect for a post though that shows like. You know, like I put in the work. I was sad to see it not not come out, but I'm proud of her putting out the work. And then she like she talked about how like, I mean, it, it made me feel better that knowing that I would have had to play out of my mind to beat Kristen. That I would like I might not have, like. So I'll say this: feel like that's a loser mentality. Saying like I would, yeah, have. maybe. Well, I also feel bit. like like who, like if you get to the champ, if you get to the Super Bowl, and you make the post. She said, Man, I'm pr- like Aaron Gossage. If he makes a post, I'm proud of myself for getting to the playoff. Yeah. But like, I feel like at Paige's level, it's expected to do the work. So she said yeah. in part of her post, because Kristen played so well, it made my average play feel easier to accept. I would have had to shoot. See, like, I don't like that. I, yeah. I, I would have like had that. to shoot 22 down. That's a loser to mentality. Make, to even make one stroke up. Yeah, I don't like that's that. That's kind of like, it's kind of like. Oh, well, I would have had to play perfect anyway, so it doesn't like it, it's whatever that I didn't. Where yeah, like I, mean, yeah, I feel like pa- a, a few years ago, Paige like yeah, and here, she was expecting and here's the here's perfect. the difference: if you're breathing down Kristen's neck the whole tournament, she's not playing that well. Yeah, <laughs> like more than likely, yeah. Kristen was basically playing a casual yeah, round. If you're not, out there, if yeah, Kristen didn't have any pressure because nobody was applying it. Therefore, yeah, of course, she played that. Well, well, she had like Henna and others applying it, but it's not the same. It's not the same because like I they, feel like Kristen a lot of times right now can play. Like wait for them to mess up golf. Exactly. If you have Paige or Cat exactly. chasing you, you don't feel just because of the name that the aura surrounding Paige. If she's on that chase, yeah. Kristen is you able. You don't feel that you can play. Wait for her to mess up. She's golf. able to yes. just yeah manage the course right now and just throw shots within her game, and she never has to do anything out of her comfort zone, and that's awesome. And that's just how it is right now. Yeah, Paige you're Pierce. right. You're right. It's it, she's just when she gets like somebody like Henna up near her, like like what were they tied going to the last round or they were They're yeah they tied, were tied. Yeah. She knows I just play my game and Henna will collapse and there it is. It happens. It happened. Like she won by seven strokes. Like, and they were tied going to the last when round. When the person chasing you has three putt from within five feet of the basket recently, yeah. What do you worry about? Like yeah. they're gonna mess up. Paige Pierce averaged nine forty six rated golf there. Katrina Allen might have been able to beat her. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> you, yeah, you could have. Uh, Katrina Allen will do that real quick. Not a ratings heavy podcast. Don't get the wrong take here. Not yeah. even. I think this is the first time I've talked about ratings in a long, a long time. time but sometimes it's cat sometimes average nine thirty five. Oh man, brutal, brutal. I mean, uh, what two years ago we were talking about Paige possibly reaching thousand I mean, rated. Kristen was over a thousand rated. I think Kristen average. average. I think she averaged like ten ten oh six. Yeah, she went ten thirteen, ten thirty, nine sixty five, ten fourteen. What's her? What's she at now? Kristen. Yeah. Nine eighty seven. Dude, Kristen's gonna be the Kristen, first one to a thousand rated. <laughs> Kristen is playing like she could be the first thousand rated FPO player. That would be Paige, so impressive. Paige had the shot at the COVID ratings. She was very close. What was she? Nine ninety three. She got to nine ninety six. Even. I think nine ninety six. Yeah, she got to nine ninety six and then dropped to nine seventy seven. Sick. Because nine ninety six, yeah, only used thirty nine rounds. Because that's that was the COVID ratings. That was your check. That was the shot. Cause like I got to like nine eighty nine during COVID ratings. This guy was, this guy was COVID in and yeah. up. Dang. Man. COVID ratings were just crazy. You could do whatever you wanted with them. Um, I did not take advantage of the COVID ratings. On MPO side, I did, man. MPO side, it seemed <laughs> it seemed like it was going to just be the most boring finish of all time. Ricky was up. I want to say it was like six strokes, five right. or six strokes, with yeah. a few holes left to go. It was over. Nobody was challenging him on that and last day. Unsurprisingly, the commentator said it was over. Everyone said it was over. This time when the commentator was saying it was over, I was like, yeah. But it's never over. Especially if the commentators say it's over, I think that means it's not over. Like I just, so. I just don't understand mm. why they have like such an urge to do that when like it's not necessary yeah. for the broadcast. You're not giving anybody context. All you're doing when you say something like that is getting people to turn off the broadcast. Yeah. Oh, it's over? Okay. Boop. 
Yeah. So like Ricky, if I were the pro tour, I'd be like, stop. Yeah. <laughs> it's not over. Ricky had it in the bag. Uh, and then he had a stroke of good luck gone bad on hole 14, which if you haven't seen it, basically his drive Bro, hit this crazy, like one in a million. His drive hits this umbrella that was sitting in bounds, leading up against the OB stake, whether it's it was beautiful. either a spectator or a spotter's really umbrella, important. doesn't matter. Yeah. Umbrella somewhere. It should not be it was so beautiful. sitting in bounds. Ricky's disc comes in, gets a skip. Some people are arguing it was going to stay in anyways. Mm. It didn't look like it to me. Yeah, it it kind of got this weird flare counter skip. It looked like it was going to be pretty clearly OB. Hits the umbrella, stays in. Good break. Chris Dickerson's like 40 feet at this point, and he's the one who's down behind, uh, behind Rick. So Chris is like, I have to make a push now if it's going to happen. Rick gets this break. That was the moment to me when that break happened. I was like, umbrella now it's gate. really over. People because are calling like, an umbrella gate. Yeah. Because like to me, it's like, now it's over. Because that's yeah, the good that luck. Was, that's that like, was the swing shot. Yeah, there, that's yeah. it. Like, that just takes all any air out of Chris's potential sales when that happens. Rick misses the putt for his two. Left with, according to U-Disc, a 16-footer. It looked like it could have been closer to 20, but 16, 20-footer. Easy make for Rick. Chains out right side. Rolls OB. Within like a foot of where the umbrella was. Like it was like the hole was like, ah, frick. <laughs> come here, come here, come here. Uh, disc, disc don't lie. Correct, correct. Yeah. So he then reputs from his previous lie. Obviously, that smart. Guy, that spotter went up to this change and sprayed him down with WD forty. Yeah. Did that was something. like somebody Is that came a video back, idea. That was like somebody came back from the future <laughs> and and corrected history. Yeah, let's, like, let's, do a, <laughs> let's do a putting challenge where we grease the chains. You can see if it changed anything. <laughs> um so he re putted from previous lie, took a five, losing two strokes to Chris, which brought Chris within two at this point, which he got back over the next two holes. So 15, 16, he gets both of those back. Then him and Ricky tied up. 17, Ricky's at like 50 feet, Chris is probably at like 40, right? It was a pretty similar putt to like the ones that Paul and Gossage had on 18 at, at Worlds. Kind of similar. similar. You have like a slanted green up uh, elevated basket. Yeah. Um, well, except for Gossage was like 10 feet. Well, at Worlds. yeah. But similar, similar to the one Paul similar had. Green. Yeah. yeah. So Ricky lays it up, which... That I didn't, I didn't love it, didn't hate it. I was like, you know what, it is what it is. But in my head, when Ricky laid it up, I'm thinking Chris is going up one, going to 18 because I'm like, Chris is going to make this putt. He's mm-hmm. playing good. He's on a hot streak right now. He just gained back like six strokes in a matter of like three holes. Yeah. He's banging this putt, and like that's gonna be the momentum where it's like, in my head, Chris is about to win it on 17. Yeah. Chris decided to lay, lay it up. up. Yeah, Chris is so Chris is like a chess player type of disc golfer. So that doesn't surprise me. Like Chris is thinking, okay, this guarantees me a tie going into 18 and I can win this on 18. It's a tough hole. Um, My mindset is in particular when you are almost given an opportunity. Yeah. Or like you're not supposed to be in it going down the stretch and then just a few crazy things happen and all of a sudden you're in it. That's when you, you keep you, you keep your foot on the yeah, gas. Yeah, you keep your foot on the gas. You're like, okay, things are going my way. I'm taking this. Like it's it's my well, and it, and 40 feet. Yeah, obviously if he misses, there's huge. But like if you are saying I'm not going to hit basket or the stand from 40 feet with a stepper, and you're one of the best step putters in the world. Yeah, that's where it's like, that's where it's like really because like that's what I'm saying. Like I. I I would just want to take that. I just want to say, okay, he's giving me a chance to get a win here. Yeah, I'm taking it. Well, to me, I'm thinking of 18 the opposite way. I'm thinking 18 is a tough hole. I want a stroke. Stroke of insurance, yeah. Yeah, I want a stroke. Certainly. Now I can throw out of bounds and save par. Also what happens is now he's putting all the pressure on himself. Like, I have to win it on 18. Right, but before he had But before he could have been like, I have a stroke. I can kind of And it would have put a ton of pressure on Rick. Rick's going to have to birdie to catch me on 18. I can play for par. It's definitely not Dickerson's style, but to go for it there. But like I said, when you're given the opportunity, I think, and it's not even like, this isn't this isn't like the Burridge situation against Simon where it was like, this is a 40-footer, um, a step putter for one of the best step putters in the world. Wide open. And all he's got to do is not like go out of bounds on the miss. Like he's probably succeeding. He's probably making that putt like six out of 10, maybe seven out of 10 for him. Like he's, but incredible. he's making the comeback. You're probably nine. Yeah. He's probably staying in bounds nine out of 10 times. Yeah. So like, uh, yeah, I don't know. And then Tough one. he gave himself a shot though. You know, you can't, you, know, you still but I chance. think, I think because he didn't go for that, it put too much pressure on the drive on 18 and yeah. we saw him throw an awful drive. Yeah, swung it way too wide. wide. It just never had a shot. It, it's it's you such gotta a, miss that if you're on the tee there, 
you got to miss that left. He saw what happened was he flipped the disc up too much because what happened was he saw um, Isaac Robinson's drive had a lot of hyzer on it. And he started his way wide and loved it. And then it caught wind. It stayed in, but it got a little bit close to the left. And I think Dickerson saw that and said, okay, the wind's going to help. Let me get it way wide. I didn't hate his line. I hated that his line it just flipped, up. It flipped up too much. So he wasn't showing any disc to the wind. So by the time it started to come back, it was too late. And then it hit the bush anyways. Um, he He had the right idea there. But the other problem was... You can't go out of bounds right. If you're going to go no. out of bounds, you have to go out of bounds left because then you still have yourself a chance. Well, but see, that's where to me, that's what the putt on 17 gives you. Yeah. Is the putt on 17 gives you, I don't care what he just did. Yeah, his swung left, great. I'm going really overstable. I'm missing left because if I miss left, I'm so far down, right. I can get up down for par. And then still Ricky still to has to get a birdie. Yeah. Now going into 18, you're on the tee first. You have to play for birdie. Right. So I have to get somewhat aggressive. I have yeah. to put this in bounds. It has to be way down there. And what does he do? He literally just made it where Ricky was the one with the stress free hole and Ricky walked away with it. Yeah, I think yeah, I think he was given an opportunity to take that round and he pushed it to eighteen when yeah, I think he could have been more aggressive there. And then yeah, I mean he made him that's a tough tee shot, he made a mistake. Um but he certainly had a chance there. He Bright side for Rick. He's like, he earned every part of this win yeah. because when, he th- I mean, when he- the umbrella thing happened, if Rick would have won, I'd have been very upset. But then the opposite umbrella thing happened, which was like, he got a really good stroke of luck and then probably an bad equally stroke. or worse stroke of bad luck. Because mm-hmm. like the chain out from 16 feet, yeah, he threw a bad, I mean, he hit a decent bit of, of chains, a but break. from a 16 footer to then roll like 50 feet OB down and it wasn't even a steep hill really. Yeah. That's an awful break. Mm-hmm. So in like, but back to back, those things happen. He also had a massive lead at this point, like going into that round. So like, yeah, even the fact that somebody had another ch- a chance to win it yeah. was something. So like, when he won, it was like, and I mean, his drive on eighteen was, was it was clutch. impressive that Ricky was able to keep it together down there because like he he started bleeding strokes after that. He he lost yeah. four strokes in like three holes. Yeah. Um. But yeah, it was a great win for Rick. Uh, his third win on the season, I think, puts him in the lead for player of the year. What was funny is going into this event, we were talking like scenarios. I'm like, man, Paul's been having what seems like a rough season. Yet if he wins GMC, like he's the clear player of the year currently. It's still it's it's still up in the air because I mean I think s- it's Rick right now. Well, right now, no, 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 no. yeah, it, right it, now it's still it is Rick. It's still because like obviously the last two events, um, not counting the Tour Championship, you know, yeah, if Paul wins. Um, MVP, then it's like, oh, it's kind of back up in the air again. And then if he USDGC. wins USDGC, then the real interesting scenario is if Rick wins um, MVP and Paul wins USDGC. So now Paul has two majors. If Rick doesn't win MVP, if neither of them win MVP, Paul wins USDGC, though. So Rick has four wins. But Paul has three and two majors. Paul, Paul has three Paul and two majors. Season. You think so? Well, yeah, because I think Rick would trade, trade seasons with him. He wouldn't admit it, but you'd rather have... I mean, I think wouldn't you rather have two majors in a pro tour than just I would, four pro but I don't know if who'd say I had a better season. Like I, I would for my career, it, I would rather have I another think, US and another Worlds. I think anybody on the tour would take it. I think it's a better season. Yeah, points wise and happiness wise. Well, I don't think it's points wise because USGC doesn't mean anything. Points. Okay, yeah, that is true. Well, it should be anyways. Yeah, I don't know. It's an interesting one because Ricky for a four win season. In this in this climate, today's very, day and age is good. incredible. Yeah, incredible. Um, so I don't know. It's 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 going to be an interesting one down the stretch because it's very realistic that Paul could win MVP next weekend. Um, it's also very realistic Rick could win again. If Rick wins again, I don't think it matters what Paul does at USDGC. If Rick wins MVP and has yeah. a five win season five and Paul win. has three wins but two majors, I don't think that's. I don't, yeah. I don't think that's. Yeah, I would. I, I think you could argue it, but I think it'd be five wins is. Five oh, because you also do have to remember. Paul did miss the cut DDO as well. Like you can't just. Well, you also have, you also have to remember that like a wait. Pro how did Rick win. come fifty seventh at DMC? Never mind. Did he DNF? No, that's not DNF. No, that's just an awful finish. Okay, so they both have had just an awful finish but, somewhere and, in the middle. But a pro tour win is so difficult these days that five of them, yeah, it would just be insane. Yeah. Um, let's actually go ahead and take a look really quick at who qualified for the USCGC because it's coming down to crunch time. We saw Jake Ebenheimer, Silas Schultz, shout out to him, Matt Bell, and Austin Silas Turner. Schultz. Silas Schultz has been. This this is like back half of the season. You can look at his finishes, but he has gotten to the point where it's like, oh, like and Silas I believe, can, yeah. I mean, he decided to extend. Yeah, his he, he could, did make it into 
MVP, MVP. by one him. by one spot. Oh my Heck gosh, yeah. good for him. He he really has turned it on towards the end of this season. Is like he looks like legit. Like he can go out there and tour and he can I hang around. I think he surprised himself. I think, I think that's so why he too. decided to stay on the road longer but because I, he's like, oh, shout, I kind of got a chance shout here. Out the yeah, the, he could he could for sure hang around on tour. He's he's been playing very well and like throwing himself in the mix quite a few times lately, which has been awesome. Let me look at this really quick. Um, let me go to the event website here. Oh, yeah, see if the registration... I believe it's 72. I just want to double 72 check 72 plus it. whatever else they let in. Yeah, 72 plus the randos. Yeah, top 72 and Silas Schultz with that 50... Where is he at? 51 he points. Spots. He jumped 20 spots oh. into 71st. <laughs> That's awesome. So he made it. He is... Uh, able to play MVP next weekend, which I'm assuming he will, because why not? And um, That's sick. It's going to be... We'll call it impossible. It's impossible for him to get into play an event. But yeah. he qualified for USDGC, yeah. so his tour his tour continues. Good for him. That was awesome. Uh, it looks like, um, as of right now, notable players that missed the MVP spot. Paul Ulibarri caught COVID, couldn't play GMC. He's officially out of MVP. I chased him. Uh, Robert Burridge uh, missed... He finished 74th. He just came in 73rd Dang, at the most recent tournament. That's a bummer. Uh, so he is out. Um, let's see if there's anyone else down here. Zach Ryth Johnson, Justin Rozak, Noah Fivish, uh, anyone else? Tim Barham, Nathan Queen, which Nathan Queen's injured, um, and Scott Stokely. Uh, some notable players not even making it to MVP. Their seasons are officially over Pro Tour-wise. Uh, some of them are qualified for USDGC, but Pro Tour wise, their seasons are over. Um, and MVP, let me see if there's anyone registered. It's like, why the heck are they registered? I'm sure right. there will be. Oh, right now, there's only 63 people registered, so that seems pretty accurate. Yeah, there's still some people like there's a f- there's a few nine low low 900 mid 900 rated players that just must have qualified somewhere. I don't really like they're doing that, but no, it is what it is. I it doesn't think it matter. Takes away the exclusiveness. I agree. Of the event. I agree. It's only three of them. Well, gonna, I'm assuming these guys shouldn't be like, qualified either. Like, what about the guys that came in like 73rd, 74th? Yeah, like, no, I agree. It doesn't do, make sense. If you're gonna do a playoff, make it the playoffs. Yeah, uh, but it doesn't matter. Is what it is at this point. Uh, MVP is gonna be pretty electric. Let's look at FPO. Uh, the top. It's gonna be crazy having such a small field. Top 36 FPO. And are they gonna cut again? We'll qualify there. Uh, I don't believe it's four rounds. Is it? It's it's definitely Second, starts third, on Thursday. Fourth. Yeah, it is fifth. Yeah. Wow, why wow. four rounds at Maple Hill? So I thought it was normally three. So they're probably gonna cut. They should have a cut. Which <laughs> the cuts are br- like the cut at the last event was so tough for MPO. It was like wasn't it like only it was only forty got in something like that top forty because they yeah I'm, pre- I'm pretty sure that's what it was that that's like that's brutal um, top forty is hard <laughs> so thirty six uh, already made it by like a stroke Hannah. But he ended up in the top 20. Hannah. Yes, he did. I don't know how to pronounce her last name. Hannah is the last one in. Ellen Widboom is the first out. Sarah Gilpin, Callie McMorrin, um, Leah Sinajenny, Christine Jennings. That's some crazy. notable notable players that have missed the cut. Uh, one thing to note here is as it stands currently, Kona Pandas is outside of the play-in event. Oh, man. Um, if she gets 33 points, she will be able to catch... Haley King, at least, um, and possibly get into the play-in event. But it, it's going to take a pretty impressive performance at, where, imp- at MVP. What is Haley King doing this year? I don't know. She just like she's gone. She has she played World. She came ninth at Worlds. She won U.S. Women's she's, right. She, yeah, she, she's like played like well, yeah, because it was in her backyard. They've uh, she's played like a partial tour this year. I don't know what's going on. Haley King is like. Such like a missing person in the FPO tour. Like she's supposed to be one of the threats on tour and it just isn't. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so it'd be interesting to keep an eye on Kona Panis at this uh at this upcoming pro tour. Um, because Macy Valadez is, is somewhat behind her, could catch and pass her. Um, it's not impossible by any means for for Kona to make it into at least the play in event. It's pretty much impossible for her to make it into the actual event and not have to earn her spot to play in. But That'd be a pretty big story if one of the largest FPO public contracts isn't Not in the play-in. Season. Let's actually look at the MPO cut line currently. Again, they have MVP this weekend, but to see what needs to happen. Um, as of right now, the cut of the play-in event, Brody Smith and Chandler Kramer are 
in the play-in event, but they're right on the bubble of getting into the actual event. But a notable player who is in the actual event that obviously will not be there is Nico LaCastro. Is Vino even playing MVP? Vino Makala is, is registered. Okay. Uh, so Nico is five points ahead of Chandler, four points ahead of Brody. So basically Ch- Brody and Chandler are going to be battling for who's catching Germ. Nico to get in there. Germ could also catch Nico and get in there. Um, but Vino, Albert Tom, Exciting. Albert Tam, Nicholas, and Andrew Presnell are all very catchable. They're in the current event uh, by guys in the play-in event. The next one's on the bubble to get into the play-in event. We have Sexton, who's not playing. So he's the, he's going to be out. We do have to remember Eagle has a spot in the play-in event, but currently his is not planning on playing the tour championship. Yeah. So Eagle has a spot, but it's not gonna matter. it shouldn't matter. If he changes his mind, this could get di- different. But Thomas Gilbert, Gavin Babcock, Luke Humphreys, which that would be crazy if Luke Humphreys has the start he had and didn't make the tour championship. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Luke Humphreys and Linus Carlson. We'll, we'll, we'll give Chandler Fry. I think Chandler Fry is the last one. They all have a shot at getting into the tour championship. The players that are in, again, Nate Sexton is in, but does not have, uh, um, he's not playing MVP. So Nate Sexton will be out. So they're chasing down Connor O'Reilly, Andrew Marweed, and Jeremy Colling. I think above them, Chandler, Kramer, and Brody might be uncatchable. So it'll be interesting to watch that as it develops, that cut line. So notable players who I think we can safely, we won't safely be able to say it, but looking like they're going to miss the cut, notable players, Casey White, Austin Hannum, Tristan Tanner, Ben Calloway, Gavin Rathbun, Eric Oakley, Kale LaVisca, Matt Bell, Colton Montgomery, Scott Withers, Austin Turner. I think that's probably about Yuli, Zach Wright John. There's a lot of really decently lot of big players. name players that are not going to be in the top 30 at the end of the year, which is pretty shocking. Yeah, yeah, I feel like when they crazy. when they first started doing the tour championship, it was like if you're a good player and you're not in the top 30, like what are you doing? Yeah, but nowadays, nowadays it's, like, it's hard. It's to get tough in to get in there. there. It's there. it's a very you have to have a very, very good season and yeah. be out there all season to get in there, which is great. That's exactly what they wanted it to be. Um voice cracked bad there. But That's it'll okay, be interesting. Man. We'll have the MVP preview show coming up here later this week. Points wise, remember playoffs are worth a point and a half I earned. God, you better be shaking in your boots. I earned six points in MPO and thirteen and a half points in FPO. I predicted Dang, the entire FPO top three correct. Good for you, I was pretty proud you of that. You are awesome. So I now have one hundred and thirty-six point five points. <laughs> uh, Connor, Triple digits, man. Connor got four and a half points from MPO and four and a half points from FPO. I'm not ashamed. Uh, you had one person in yeah. each, but you had them both in the right spot. Yeah. Uh, 95 points is where Connor is now at. Trevor got three points from MPO, but nine points from FPO. And Great job, man. got three points for the Dark Horse pick, bringing him up to 89 points. I'm happy for you, man. Only six points back. Ack, ack. Chomping at the bit. <laughs> it's six been points so back. long. Like, I've been chipping away at this lead for so long, and I finally am like, I'm within reach now. You're within reach. I could get One it. One event could flip it. I could get it because we got a playoffs you, and a major. You, you earned six points on Connor this yeah. event. So if you do the exact same thing next week, you're tied. Ooh, Great job, buddy. No, you are mad. I'm not mad. No, you need tipped. to be. Switch the switch the camera to yourself. Look at how red he is, guys. He is mad. <laughs> uh, power ranking update. It's been a few weeks since we've done this. Um, we got to <laughs> update it. So this is gonna take another hour. <laughs> Let's start with <laughs> no. no we've got to figure it out. Figure it out. We figured it out. All right. Starting Alrighty. in tenth place, we're keeping Chris Clemens there. He had a decent finish at GMC. I like him. I think he's that boy playing is fine. Decent. Great uh, job, Chris. Kevin Jones actually tied with him, so we're keeping Kevin Jones ninth. Same Ooh. thing. I like their potential. I DJ think that they're, they're good where they are. What was the song? Simon Lazat absolutely sucked at GMC. Yeah. And he's up and down way too much, so I'm bumping him down to eighth place. Yeah. Dang, dude. So Simon Lazat is now in eighth in the world. Simon, you're fifth in my heart. He's probably going to win next Kyle week. Klein, we're going to keep him seventh. Yeah, Simon could easily win next week. MVP, his home course. Yeah. I'm not mo- If he wins... Hold me to this. He's not going to be fifth in the world. Gosh dang. If he wins. He'll have a four-win season. He'll have a four-win season, but he'll have four, like, 60th places. Um, you cannot do that. Kyle Klein, <laughs> we're going to keep it seventh. He's been playing very solid. Come on, Kyle. Um, Chris Dickerson, we're going to move up a little bit. He had, a, he had a good weekend into sixth place. But move him back down for the layup. No, they're keeping him in sixth. All right. Calvin Heimberg, we're going to keep Five him fifth. Uh, Calvin does have an argument to be moved up. 
a pretty legit one. But he's in 14th place. But man. he's kind of all over the place. He came in 14th. We're keeping him fifth. He's in the mix. Won't be surprised if he wins. Matteo has been very impressive recently. So Matteo, we're investing hard in Matteo stock, putting him fourth in the world currently. Matteo clutched up for me, got that third place, that um, huge. second place actually. Matteo, you're three and a half in my heart. Gannon Burr, a lot of people are upset at us that Gannon Burr is staying this high over Calvin Heimberg. I've seen the comments. I'm keeping him there. It's because I he's like consistent, the kid. man. Yeah, he doesn't really. You know what you're getting out of him. You do. Gonna, the point of this rankings, like we've said before, is like week in and week out, who is going to finish like closest to the spot they're in in the world rankings, um, and like. Gannon Burr always feels like he's going to come in the like top six or so, like every yeah. single week. So we're going to keep him in third. Uh, the new number two in the world is going to be Paul McBeth, dropping down from number one in the world last weekend, making room for Ricky Wysocki to go back to number one in the world. Uh, I was upset with Rick after Worlds. You know? We were all a little upset. We were all a little upset at Rick after Worlds. He came back at GMC. Uh, if the stat I'd saw previously was right, he broke Paul's streak because someone had posted... I think it was like Statmander or someone. Don't quote me on that. Don't quote me on anything I'm about to say. All right. But I saw a tweet, and I'm pretty sure the stat was that Paul had won the event uh, after Worlds, whether he had won yeah. Worlds or not, every time since 2014. Mm-hmm. If that's true, <laughs> that's a crazy, crazy stat. stat. Yeah. Um. So if that's also true, Ricky just broke it. Uh, so we're going Take Ricky that. one, Paul two, Gannon three, Matteo four, Calvin five, Chris Dickerson six, Kyle seven. Simon, 8, Kevin Jones, 9, Chris Clemens, 10. Now let's talk FPL. Let's okay. talk about it. Here's the deal. It's very obvious that Christian Tatar is the best player in the world. Obvious. And she's so far the best player in the world that I think she's the first and second best player in the world. I think, her, I think yeah, she's like head and shoulders above the Her backhand the and her forehand. Yeah. So backhand Christian's 1, forehand Christian's 2 in the world. Own Scoggins. I love that. I think that's fantastic. No one else deserves it. No one. They don't deserve they don't it. Deserve own Scoggins it. is third. If you're going to argue me, go to Statmando's website, put own next to Paige and Cat since June, and see how much of a slap down she's laying on him because it's impressive. Yeah. She own Scoggins is third. Missy Gannon, similar type thing. She's beaten up on him. Fourth in the world, fifth in the world, Evelina Solonen. Paige Pierce and Katrina Allen, congratulations. You've sucked your way out of the They're top banished. five. Can you make a desert island and put them both on it? Desert island power rankings. One, One page, two, two, cat. I like it. Dang. Three, desert a island. coconut. If you... <laughs> If you win MVP, actually Wilson. the coconut is one. If, you're, if, you're wi- yeah. if you win MVP, e- either Cat or Paige, I'm willing to welcome you back into the top five. You will give you. We'll give you we'll, a. Light we might boat. give you fifth, but yeah, as of right now, they don't belong in the top five. I think that's what they need. I think they need a little motivation, our from, motivation. Our, from our top yeah. five. I to know get they're back. listening. Oh, yep. Paige, I know you're listening. That's <laughs> not. She's got me blocked. So uh, let's like. But not take, Trevor though. Let's take. It's true. She's listening to Trevor. She can't hear a word I'm saying. <laughs> on my channel. Imagine if we like released podcasts where it was like just one just of the our Trevor mics. channel, or just the Trevor's in your left ear, I'm in your right ear. That would be fun. Connor's coming. Can out we edit mouth. it like that? <laughs> <laughs> Talking through you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, before we get into Trevor's trivia, let's actually take a moment to thank another one of our sponsors for today's episode. Today's episode is sponsored by True Classic, the brand that makes T-shirts that actually fit. Yeah, actually Not to mention fit. they're super soft. When you're jacked, finding the right t-shirt can be incredibly frustrating. What the heck was just thrown at me? Uh, wow. Uh, most t-shirts I'm going are too to tight. University. <laughs> most t-shirts are too tight and all the wrong places are way too big and boxy, but not true classic. They already have helped two million men get their fit on at an affordable price, and our listeners get the absolute best deal that they offer. For a limited time, only get 25% off with the code griplock at trueclassic.com. Guys. Yeah, you're wearing off, the wrong clothes. Ah, a dang lot. It. Time to level up. Highlight your greatest assets with a T-shirt that can confidently throw on and throw in anytime. You need True Classic. Their tees are snug around the arms and chest to make your muscles pop and and looser in the torso for added comfort. True Classic clothing is made with every man in mind. You'll get that quality luxe fit and the softness you've always wanted but never received from those sandpaper excuses for t-shirts. Yeah. These things are so soft you'll actually want to wear them. And guess what? They don't stop at tees. They're your one-stop shop for all things men wear. I actually just ordered some of their shorts. I'll let you know Verdict when they come in. Out. I got the I, I ordered them last night. Hunter late literally last night. used the code. I did. Of course I used our code. Oh uh, yeah, we used well, our yeah. codes, guys. Uh I and <laughs> 
I got the tracking this morning. They already shipped them. So Dang, I'll let dude. you know here pretty soon how they are. Um, this is some quick, um, quick shippers ahead, right there. They make Golf it super King. easy to build out your wardrobe from polos and workout shorts, shirt, shirts and shorts to the same flattering fit to boxer briefs designed with a pouch to keep your package nice and comfortable. All the things, clothing, comfortable, long lasting, affordable and do us a favor. Accentuate those popping biceps with their Woo! active wear crew necks. Come popping. on. Come on now. Uh, pro tip. You can actually bundle your favorites with the pack builder on their site and save even more than the discount we're offering That's you today. That's a cool thing. It's Everyone looks like John the Rock Dwayneson when they put them on. Time to get your fit together. Upgrade your wardrobe with True Classic at 25% <laughs> off at trueclassic.com with grip locked free shipping included on purchase over $100. That's 25% off at trueclassic.com with the code grip lock. Strengthen your core wardrobe with True Classic today. True Classic. Look good. Feel good. Play good. I added the last one. <laughs> Nicholas, <laughs> Nicholas the Cage Johnson. Give it the bo- bo- bip. <laughs> time for <laughs> time for a fan. Fa- <laughs> that could not have been that funny. <laughs> time for a fan favorite segment. Trevor's trivia. What do you got for us today, Trevor? <laughs> Why did that make you laugh so hard? That was nice. I was, I was not expecting that sound at all. Oh my gosh, you made me laugh so hard. I got an eyelash in my eyeball. How is that possible? <laughs> How did you make that? Sound? <laughs> Connor is having a rough time, man. I started choking during that <laughs> ad read. Hunter made me laugh so hard. You're welcome. Or throw it in. All right. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why that was. Um, right. We're playing Price is Right today. Quiz me, big boy. Playing Price is Right. This is the like oh, one yes. game that Connor is actually like. The last time we did this oh, was just Connor. Thing? Yeah, it's the only thing. This last time we did this was just Connor, and he freaking had a lifetime performance. It was crazy. Like, was a, like $80. A, like a Hallmark movie. No. Nice try, though. <laughs> I am counting that as your first guess. <laughs> um, all right. Price is right. If you haven't uh, listened do, to us play do, this game do, before. Do. No, that's that's copyrighted. Do it like off key. It, doesn't it was. <laughs> <laughs> um, do it in reverse. Yep. Do, 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 do. <laughs> um, so anyways, I'm going to name a disc that has sold on eBay. It's already been sold for a certain price. You try and guess what it's sold for. See if we how well we know the market. Um, so the first one we're going to start with is... The Arobi Epic. The Arobi Epic. Used. Do we have a price range? I'm, range, I'm ready to guess. The I'm range guess. for this challenge? No range. I'm ready it to It ranges guess. from 50 to 250. Glad you said it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going with 55 doll hairs. Ooh, 55 doll hairs. For some reason, I'm going to look it up really quick. Do you mind? Um, for some reason, I feel like these are going for a little more than that. Um, <laughs> Excuse me. I'm going to stand by $80. Is fifty five dollars? I was on the dot. He was on the dot. Big poop. Boom. All right. Great job, Hunter. Nice lead. I respect you. Next, we have choice. A, fir- <laughs> a first run Captain's Raptor clear with a money foil. I mean, New. Here go, Conair. Like, are these going for a lot? I'm gonna say seventy bucks. Ah, it's Discraft though. I'm gonna go. No. <laughs> you already guessed. Don't my guy. win, Hunter. It's gonna hurt I'm my gonna feelings. I'm gonna go ninety dollars. Hundred dollars. All right. Gosh darn, dude. I hate this game, and I hate Trevor, and I hate Hunter. Next, we have Cheers, a brand mate. new three line AJ Destroyer. Mm. Three line AJ Destroyer. Three a lines br- not as can't much. Be, hey guy, guess what? It can't be brand new or it's fake. Sixty five dollars. Oh, it's so hard to tell with this old end of a stuff because sometimes it's just shockingly depressing how like little people care about it. Like all the little people care about it, none of the big people care about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I'm gonna say this one is going to be ninety five dollars. It's eighty five dollars. Okay, all okay, right. okay. All right, I'm ground. glad I was wrong hey, on that. Hear one. that? Hear that? That's some ground gained. All right. Twenty know, bucks worth more. Ground. This next yeah. one's kind of tough. This is a assigned by Mr. Macbeth himself. Okay, so he assigned it to Test somebody. Test Flight Athena, brand new. Test Flight Athena. A lot of hype oh, around that. That's right gonna be big. Okay, I, I'm ready. Your guess. One fifty. I was thinking one twenty five. Price is one fifty. Oh, Connor. <laughs> It's a ten. It's a ten point game right now. Well, I now invite you to get lit, Jid. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> All right, this I ne- am lit. This next one is a four claw Wonder Bread Buzz, twenty nineteen. Four claw. What'd you say the range was at the beginning? I'm not gonna remind you. Two hundred dollars. If I'm gonna, be, I traded a, I traded a four claw Buzz for that uh, titanium wasp I have. <laughs> yeah, dude. I just didn't care about it. 
at the time. You should have. Two hundred dollars. I'm gonna go. Surely it can't be more than the Athena. The Athena's about to come out though. Yeah, but it's a uh, like Yeah. You're right. Because the protos are about to come out. You're right. I'm going one twenty five. Two hundred fifty dollars. Yes. Four claws. You we said, had four you claws. Said in your hey, you mind, said the price range brother? ran from fifty, 50 to two hundred dollars. Fifty. <laughs> said fifty Roll to two fifty. Roll the tape. Roll the tape. I don't know. I asked you for it. You would say it again. I definitely okay. said fifty That's to two. I'm not upset at you because like, I was it, it staring make a at difference. it. It was a bad. It was a bad choice anyway. <laughs> we've had four claws always are expensive, Connor. We've had them so many times on here. I've never. No, we haven't. Yeah, we have. No, oh, man. we've done four claw zones many times. Mm. No, no. You got, they're right. about to make six claws. Connor's no, head no. so. <laughs> what? <laughs> Connor's head so spacious in here, man. <laughs> Can't All believe right. he doesn't charge me any rent. We got two more. How's the beanbag chair? OG Glow Get nice. Freaky Zone, brand new. OG Glow Get Freaky Zone, brand new. Brand new. The brand is new. Can EW. Here you go. 50 to 250. Well, it's not going to be 250 again. I can tell you that for free. But we haven't had a $200 one yet. But are people paying $200 for that? No. Yes. 180. I'll go 150. I bet you will. I bet you happily go 150. It is $80. All right. I was going to go 110, but I didn't want to go too far away from Connor with this lead. Well, last one. Just an exhibition at this point. Glow flat top gator, the old factory store. How many ones. points am I up? Brand new. You're up 105 points. Okay. I'm not playing anymore. No, guess. I'm going to give you a chance. Flat top gator. <sighs> I like. I think the that's glow, cool, but I don't think anybody cares about that. Store, but they don't, I don't think you can buy them Did anymore. Did it sell recently? Yeah, these are all recent within the last few days. This is a stupid one where like, if I say 70 bucks because I don't think people care about it that much, even though they should, it's going to be like, it's $109, Connor, you idiot, obviously. <laughs> I just be, man, that last this game for some reason really got in my head. Think, well, you did so well <laughs> in the last one. This is hard. You thought you could is, defend your turf. I did. Hunter is inevitably hey, Thanos. Hunter's being so mean to me. Right okay, now. He looks in that sweatshirt too. That vintage sweatshirt. I think it's sick. Okay, I I'm gonna say. That. I'm gonna say. Gosh, I wish I could still buy that. I'm gonna say seven <laughs> seventy five dollars. <laughs> <laughs> what'd you say, stupid? He's at 75. <laughs> He's at 75. What'd you, what'd you guess? How many points I got? 105. I'll go 150. Yeah, Just I bet for you, you will. I bet you will, dude. It's $65. I, I was going to go 50. I'm the winner. That one was take it all. That was, it was winner takes all. all. Congratulations, Connor. Thank you. <laughs> Wait. No, no. <laughs> What's happening? That's trying like, to I'm trying key. to like stay out of the copyright situation. Beautiful. There are you waiting for me to do something right no, now? No, I'm just looking. I am. <laughs> what are you waiting for me to do? Welcome to the Big What are you band. waiting oh, for? <laughs> I forgot um, you don't have anything planned after this part of the show. Well, I figured we could talk Let's a little do bit. Uh, make that call. You want to do a make that call? Make I have a question. Up. Okay, good. Real quick, top five uh, disc golf companies marketing teams. Rate them. Us, number one. No, like manufacturers? Like oh. manufacturers. Number one. Man, man. I'm going dynamic disc, number one. Yeah, I would say dynamic. Mainly because they were able to stay afloat and stay relative with no good players for a long time. That is very impressive. And that's just uh, pure good, marketing. And good enough to have enough money to sign Ricky. Yeah. Back. Um, so I'm going to go dynamic one. Um, I, I'm stuck between Discmania, I think Discmania too, because they. Oh, I the, thought we were doing individual list. I agree with you on one. Okay, I'll agree. Discmania, Discmania two. two no, because I think you guys need to agree on a list. They okay. They, we're, all working, they they we're all working spun, together. They the whole Italian blend thing was the smartest thing they ever did, and also the fact that they've been able to keep that like spin that whole situation and. The videos they do for with like Simon like promo new discs are really good. They're pretty active on social media, like in comments and stuff. So Dismania is pretty good with their marketing. I would say three is Discraft because of their effort, not necessarily the quality. Yes. They do they do put out a good bit of stuff. Their posts look good. They look good. They're a lot yeah, of times too similar, which is a little bit whatever. But they're not bad. 
They've got decent graphics. And then after that, it gets a little murky, doesn't it? Does, Very doesn't murky. Because, um, I mean, at that point, like, do you just go Innova for? But, like, Innova doesn't market. I don't feel exactly like Prodigy has markets. marketing. And really. Prodigy doesn't really market them. Prodigy, Prodigy made that cool commercial. The commercial's okay. Innova Let's go does, Prodigy for. Innova does pretty oh, good. Oh, MV, does MVP? Well, uh, Latitude 64, I think we're overlooking their YouTube channel. That's very yeah. true. But I feel like I would, I'm willing to put... What do we put Latitude above <laughs> Discraft? No. They're Discraft does more, but their execution on what they're doing is worse than Latitude. Latitude's commercial is also one of the better ones where, like, showing how you make the disc is pretty cool. And Latitude's YouTube channel, though. Like, we're, we're overlooking yeah. that. We're overlooking it. Okay, Latitude 3, Discraft 4. I was going to say... I'm almost I think willing to go Clash Disc 5. I was... No, I was because they're doing some cool stuff. But with think cookies. about like Innova's social, like Innova's pretty good on. They're thinking about it, but they social, took bro. so long to congratulate the winners on their team. Yeah, yeah, that's weak sauce, man. Their sauce is weak. Okay, but they did get sound me like, excited. You sound like an Innova simp, They did bro. get me excited about the. Well, I'm just saying that every post. time I go on Instagram, I see. Honestly, but they're uh, resharing. I would give them the marketing. I think that's fine. Though. Resharing is still. I would give them the points just for the freaking Dave Dunapace videos where he's out there like. Let me show you about the new arrow from Minimo. This thing, it flies like a putter. And he's like, now I'm going to show you the snake strike putt. You don't want your putters going well, all this way and that way. You the real question the is, <laughs> at this point, who's doing, <laughs> who that we haven't named is doing more than Innova? Here's the thing. I'm trying to think of MVP. Dynamic gets first place because of the helicopter. I think you guys forget about that. True. That is true. MVP, I don't feel like he's doing much marketing-wise that I'm seeing. I, I feel like this is like we just don't follow some of the companies. That could be true. <laughs> like I don't think I follow MVP. I follow Discraft. I think that's who's the, the look worst. Look at MVPs. I'll pull up social, social right now. Who's the worst? Maybe we're maybe we're missing out. I don't know. Maybe we're missing out on MVP and like they have like an incredible social media. We just don't know. I do not follow them. You oh were my right. Gosh, dude, this is see. This is what I'm saying. I mean, I follow. I also don't follow Latitude. I just follow them. Cast Plus, mm-hmm. I don't follow. Dude, what the frick am I doing? Okay, no. Streamline, I don't follow. None of their posts look like mind boggling. Okay, two days ago, four days ago, they post five like days ago, consistently. Five days ago, six days ago, week ago. That's damn sick. When are we getting the glitch? It should be soon. People I want, want the a, glitch. People want a glitch only round. I want the glitch so, so bad. bad. People want a glitch only round. They so have bad. made me want the glitch. Yeah. They're, uh, but then let's put it in the five team. spot. Let's put MVP in the five. All right. For the glitch. <laughs> Boom. For, for the, the glitch. glitch. And they're disc marked themselves because they look cool. So there you go. True. Take that I one. would like a glitch, please. All right. You, we, will, we will make sure personally that you do not get your hands on a glitch ever. You can't really do that, Trevor. I will tell them not to sell you one. You're going to tell who? You're going to see your name on a poster inside of every disc golf retailer in the world. And it says, Don't no sell glitch. this man a glitch. Listen. He is the glitch. No Trevor. glitch for this. I have this son I'm of a glitch. The blank. All I gotta do is drive over <laughs> to the warehouse and be like, Brad, please. No, no, I already told Brad. Brad's in my pocket, dude. He's not in your pocket, but I do trust that Hunter could keep Brad for getting, getting one, though. I already told him. Yeah. I said Connor's not allowed in the warehouse. Uh, how do you how do you think you ended up on the wall of shame? <laughs> I'll just go in there after hours. I have a key. <laughs> how do you have a key? I ain't got a key. Not anymore. You I don't, don't know. <laughs> I, I guess what I was. G- <laughs> <laughs> it's right here. I don't know. Did you guys see David it. Blaine eating nails the other night? No, but this is getting way too close to the. All right, yes. all right. Turn we'll it off. Turn it off. MVP. Turn it off. We'll talk to you for the MVP preview here in a few days. Uh, if you liked the what was just the rabbit hole we were just going down, check out the Boogie Bow Banter on Wednesdays. Yes. You also, keep a lookout. Today is Monday. Keep a lookout on Wednesday because we are about to leave here and go shoot an absolutely electric video for our Foundation Nation channel on YouTube. And it might be electric. It, it could is, suck. We haven't tried it no, yet, but I guarantee electric. you it's going to be awesome. So I'm go going watch all in. that. Would it, I'm going all out. <laughs> I always count on Connor going all in. We'll see you me, on Thursday. And me taking that energy and like using it. <laughs> Whenever we do like a challenge video. Cut it. We'll see you. We'll see you in the, the challenge video. Hunter, Hunter's leaned back really far, which means the episode's over. <laughs>